Welcome everyone to um, our November webinar on navigating the virtual open education conferences. This is Una Daly from the Community College Consortium for OER. And we're so pleased you could join us today uh, to find out more about the conferences that are coming up uh, next week and the following week. Hope you're planning to attend those. So uh, we're primarily gonna focus on those conferences and we have two, uh, we have uh, two folks from each conference. Uh, first off from the steering committee from the Open Education Conference. And I'll mention those speakers here in just a moment and introduce them. And then we'll also have uh, two of our organizers from Open Education Global who are gonna talk about the conference that's happening the week after, November 16th. Um, and then a Q&A for folks, but you can use the chat window. All right, I am now going to introduce folks and let them say hello. I'm going to start on the left-hand side here with Amy Harris-Tan, who is the Dean of English and Communications at Houston Community College and is also on the steering committee for the Open Education Conference. Would you like to say hello, Amy? Oh, yes, hello, and thank you for having me. Wonderful. And next up, I'd like to introduce Lee Miller. She's the Director of Innovation and Compliance at the Center for Innovation and Excellence at Barton Community College in Kansas. Thanks, hello, thank you. Yeah, we appreciate the invitation to, to talk today. Okay, and, and I'm sorry if I didn't mention, Lee is also on the Open Education Steering Committee and they'll fill us in about, um, you know, a little bit about the committees and um, all about the conference in just a few minutes. And, Next up is Susan Huggins. She's the Director of Communications at Open Education Global. Hi, everybody. Nice to be here. Wonderful. And last but not least is Alan Levine. He's our Strategy and Engagement Director at Open Education Global. Hello, everybody. Great to be here and see all our friends from Community College land. Well, thank you to all of you for joining us today um, to help us navigate. And if I think I forgot to mention who I am, I, I am Luna <laughs> Daly, the, the director of CCCOER, um, and today's moderator. So uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Community College Consortium for OER, we've been around for 13 years now. Um, and our focus is expanding awareness and access to high quality OER. And we do that through supporting faculty and also uh, regional OER leadership and ultimately, our goal is to improve student equity and success. And here you get a little glimpse of our members uh, across the United States. And we're, we're very thrilled to have all those wonderful members who are doing open education on their campuses. I have a couple of quick announcements before we get into the main body of our um, webinar. And one is that there is a free the textbook campaign um, that has been running this fall. It's organized by OpenStax and it's inviting those of us in the open education community and also administrators at colleges and universities overall to look at uh, some of the fine print around access codes and inclusive access, which is becoming a very popular um, method for uh, publishers to deliver the instructional materials. Uh, we had a webinar that touched on this last month, uh, talking about the student impact. Uh, we had a very um, passionate and articulate student talking about how these access codes are actually making it more expensive for her to attend college. Uh, she's no longer able to purchase uh, used textbooks. And um, if she needs to retake a class, she has to uh, repurchase uh, the access code. So we're just telling people to take a look at the fine print, make sure that this, uh, if, you in, if you engage in one of these contracts that uh, your students are truly benefiting from this. And you can see we are one of the co-sponsors. Um, we're very proud to be one of the co-sponsors, Open Education Global and CCCOER, and also Spark and Student Purgs, the Massachusetts Department of Higher Ed, ISCME and Creative Commons. So there's quite a few of us who are supporting this work. All right, and the, the final announcement I have is I wanted to mention the Open Education Awards for Excellence in 2020. This is something that Open Education Global has been running for, 
I think it's the last decade, but Susan may help me out there. Um, and um, it's uh, uh, an opportunity for you to nominate uh, your colleagues in the field. And of course, this is globally around the world um, who are involved in open education, either leading or in the classroom or running projects. And um, we don't have time to um, share everybody who was um, awarded this year, but I just did want to mention uh, there were six individual awards given out. Uh, here are the wonderful people here at the top left. Um, and um, you can see there's people from New Zealand, from Canada, and of, and of course from the United States. Um, we have Amy Hofer there as a, she got a support specialist award. She of course is one, one of our members. Uh, she is the coordinator of Open Oregon. Uh, we also have uh, Aperva from Rebus Foundation and Nick, um, I'm gonna forget Nick's last name, but Nick uh, was a student awardee who uh, uh, has worked at US student PERGS um, for advocating for open. Um, you can also see there was an, a, quite a large number of open practice awards, and I'm sorry, I couldn't fit them all on the screen. So you can just see that there's a few of, theirs, a few of those up top, and I'll just mention a couple of those. The OER starter kit, which of course was started by um, Abby Elder, produced by Abby Elder at uh, University of Iowa, and then extended by Stacey Lehman at uh, CUNY this summer with the workbook. Um, and, and you can see there's the um, Open Pedagogy Project, which was started at Montgomery Community College, um, and it supports faculty fellows in aligning their uh, courses with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and many more. And finally, there was Open Asset Awards, and you can see there's just some really wonderful ones, the Nursing Pharmacology textbook that came out of Chippewa Valley. Uh, we had one here from Latin America, which um, uh, is an open repository. And finally, an open tool called the Manifold Scholar, Scholar from CUNY. So uh, please do um, go to our website. Thank you very much, Liz, for putting that in the, um, in the chat window and read more about these amazing people and their projects. Well, and if I can jump in, uh, in addition to that, in, during Open Education Global, each of the award recipients will have a unique space, giving you the opportunity to visit them, communicate with them, and learn a little bit about each of their projects. So look them up uh, once you get into the, um, uh, the venue. Thank you for that, Susan. And um, for those of you who are attending today or listening to this later, uh, please consider uh, next year when the um, nominations uh, open up again in the spring, nominating either yourself or your colleagues um, we, uh, for these awards. All right, now I wanna turn it over to uh, Amy and Lee to tell us about the Open Education Conference coming up in just a few days. And I just wanted to mention that um, this year is different from the previous 15 years of the conference. There's actually, um, it's, it's very community driven. There are several committees, but including the steering committee, which has guided this process and reached out to the community at every step um, in order to um, produce the conference that, uh, that is really um, by and for the community. And I'm gonna stop sharing my uh, screen now so that Amy and Lee can take over. Okay, let me get my screen going. And can everyone see my screen? Excellent. So um, I'm just gonna start with the website. And just to say a little bit about the community process, um, the steering committee was, was brought together um, by OpenStack, Spark, uh, the University of Maryland system, and, um, and Colorado. And so those groups got together and, and created a process to create a steering committee. And, and the steering committee has grown. We have, I think we have about 12 people and you can click on the website and you can click on about and see who's on the steering committee. Um, and I just wanna say that, that we are committed to cr creating this conference um, 
with the community. And the second goal for the steering committee will be to set up a community driven structure so that our, our the conference will com continue to be owned by the community. And so we're, that's also part of our, our task. And, and when the conference ends um, and at the end of next week, we'll, we'll be turning our attention more fully to, to that process as well. Um, so here's the, the main website page. Um, I just, you, you do have to register. Um, once you register, it will be, it's through, through Eventbrite and you will then be sent an email and you will get information on how to register with Sketch. And so you'll see the, the program is going to be completely hosted through Sketch and through Zoom. So you'll want to go ahead and create an account for Sketch if you, if you don't already have an account. And it's pretty user friendly. Um, I just want to point to a couple of things for people who haven't used Sketch. I, I have a feeling many of you have and are familiar with this um, platform. Uh, but you can see uh, a simple overview where you can see um, it listed by day and by time and all the different sessions that you can join. Um, you can come here and you can pick different views. If you want an expanded view, which gives you all of the session descriptions. And you can uh, pick a grid view and you can pick by venue. Um, I really like the simple view. Um, you can also come over here to the right hand side and you can filter by date. You can filter by uh, session type. And I wanna just draw your attention here. Lee is gonna talk about the different sessions, but we do have asynchronous sessions and this is how you can find the asynchronous session. You can filter by topic. And um, one of the nice things about having an account is when you're signed in, you can see other attendees and you can engage and communicate with them. And let's see, I think those are all the features that I want to point out about Sketch. And so I'm going to turn it over to Lee to talk a little bit about the different session types. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, so like she was talking about some of the, the synchronous versus asynchronous, we're trying to make sure that we have a lot of different opportunities for a lot of people um, to view in a lot of different time zones. So we kind of try to make sure and keep that in mind. So some of the synchronous options are presentations, panels, um, and interactive discussions and or workshops. Um, so presentations will be 25 minutes and then the other two panels and the interactive workshops will be 55 a piece. Um, as you notice when she was going through the different things, we have multiple things going on at the same time. So do kind of note um, as you're going through sketch um, specifically when the time is. Um, and if I'm correct, all of these, even though they are live, they will be recorded. Is that correct, Amy? That is correct. They will be recorded and then posted later on a YouTube platform. I should also mention you can um, select your time zone to help you manage your schedule. And when you're signed in, you can um, build your, your own schedule. And so schedule be, um, send you your, your personal calendar. Um, and one more thing I forgot to mention is we are running every session through Zoom and we are requiring a registration. So when you, when you click on it, you're gonna see the link for the live stream. And when you click on that live stream, it's gonna ask you to enter your first name and your email. And then it will give you immediate access to the Zoom room for the live events. Wonderful, thank you. So um, with that, kind of that knowledge, um, anything that you want to make sure that you have time to interact with or ask questions or, you know, have some sort of dialogue within that, um, within that presentation, uh, then you can make sure you note that and take the live ones, whereas you just want the information, then, then that's something you can take if you have other things overlapping. Uh, the asynchronous ones, um, specifically, I have highlighted for the lightning talks and showcase gallery. Um, so when you go through, you'll be able to go through and 
look at any number of the, the lightning talks, which are 10 minutes long. Um, and those are gonna just be a, a video option that you can take at any time. Um, so for different topics, um, as you can see along that filter, that's a really great example of the different types of, top, of topics. Some of them that I'll highlight real quick um, are like Open Education 101, where there's a, either a lot of newcomers that want to have some basic information um, provided and answer some of those questions, um, or if, if people just need a, a little bit of a refresher of some of the uh, new terms that are being used and some other things like that. Um, practices, uh, social justice, and DEI, that's going to be quite um, uh, thoroughly discussed throughout the entire conference. Different strategies, uh, we are in COVID, obviously that's affected everybody. Um, open education and then um, specifically uh, the plenary sessions. So Amy, you wanna talk about those just a, a little bit? Yeah, so one of the things that we heard loud and clear from the community calls was that the, the, the community, they didn't want keynotes, they didn't wanna hear from rock stars, and we made a deliberate effort to invite diverse, marginalized voices to speak. We want to, want to amplify those voices. Um, and so when you do see a plenary session, you might see two speakers, and each speaker will be limited to 25 minutes in their talk. And really, we're emphasizing the questions and the exchange with those speakers. Um, the opening and closing plenaries are designed to be interactive. And so the first plenary is gonna really focus on storytelling um, and there will be opportunities for people to engage in storytelling in small groups if they want to. Um, and we've also created a venue for people who, who aren't wanting to be interactive and who prefer to take an observer role. So we're, we're really trying to create um, opportunities for everyone to, to feel engaged and involved to the extent that they wanna be. And, and with that engagement, and I'm sure we're probably um, bordering on our time, so I'll just highlight a couple of options in terms of so a lot of social features that have been integrated in this, just to kind of mirror some of the things that we would get at that live um, type of community and connection and different things. Um, so one of the aspects we'll be using is called Discord, which is a, an online platform um, where you can go in and have a lot of different types of conversations there. Um, an early show and a late show where it'll be very much kind of like, you know, very similar to what you'd kind of see on TV, but um, fun. Amy's actually going to be hosting the, uh, the early show, so uh, sign in for those. Um, tea time, karaoke, there's also going to be a choose your adventure, which you can go in and just kind of see what you find interesting and jump right in and jump out as, as you'd like. Uh, so lots of different things um, for people to, to be in, as active and interactive and take in as much as they want. Um, and then uh, if you have any questions uh, at the end, we'll be, we'll be happy to, to answer any of those. And I just wanna draw your attention. Um, if, you, if you do go to the main website and click on news, you will see a link to tips. So I'm sorry, there was one more page. So, so this is, if you click on news, it's gonna open this page and you can click on tips. And this is for anyone who's attending the open ed um, these are just some, some ideas for how you can make the most of the conference. Um, so I won't read them to you. You can access them and, um, and they're here for you. So um, Una, I, whenever you are, are ready for us to take questions, we'll be ready. Okay, wonderful. I had a question. So Sketch is there kind of for our convenience, but it doesn't mean that we have to use Sketch. We can jump into we could go to Sketch at right before a session and jump in, or do we have to register? You do for, have you do have to register. So you have to register for the conference. Correct. I don't think you have to sign in with Sketch. I think you can click on the link, and but you do then have to register for that session with Zoom. Oh, you do. Okay, so you have to register for each one. Okay, gotcha. It, it's um it's going to be an immediate process. Um, we kind of went round and round about, you know, how, how, you know, we don't want to have barriers. We want to be open. Um, but then we kind of came back to, we also want to be able to see who's entering the rooms. And, and we really, we do have a code of conduct that is on our website. Um, and, and when you register, you have to agree to that code of conduct. And we felt that would sort of give us that, that element, that level of being able to, um, you know, 
monitor and, and make sure that we are creating a safe space for, for everyone to engage. Okay, yeah, no, I, I, I understand that concern for sure. Um, and there were some questions in the chat window um, and um, people were asking about the registration cost and Lee said that it's 75, but there's still scholarships available. Is the early bird still available, the 75? Because there was some talk about it going up um, after I think November 1st or something. Um, you know, I, I should know the answer to that. I'm going to click on register <laughs> and see what, <laughs> where that takes us. Um, there, there was, I thought, I also thought that there was, it looks like um, it was extended to November 1st. I, I don't see, I don't see an increase there, but, but we do have scholarships available. So we, we don't want cost to be a barrier. Um, and we, we have been, um, giving out quite a few scholarships. I think we'll have more information on that um, during the conference. So um, please don't hesitate to apply for a scholarship if cost is a barrier. Wonderful, and it's really good to see that you have a $25 student uh, fee. So folks can um, invite their students and maybe even help them pay for that. So that's wonderful. And just to go ahead and add, that's for grad students or doctoral students too. So if, if you have faculty or other things, that, that would count as well. Okay, wonderful. Um, and we had a question from Sophia. She said, how long are the sessions available for? And I'm not absolutely sure what you meant by that, Sophia. Um, was that how long will they be available, the recording or, um, I'm not sure, uh, Lee or Amy, if you understand what that question is. Well, all, all I can say, Amy, I don't know if you wanna take that one. Lightning rounds would be accessible during the whole um, during the whole conference. If things are getting uploaded to YouTube afterwards, I would assume that they would be accessible in, in YouTube. Is that correct, Amy? That's correct. So once the conference ends, we're, we're going to be migrating everything over to a YouTube platform where, where it will be completely open and accessible for people to, to um, view at a later date. During the conference, um, sessions will be post, we're going to be trying to get those recordings up as soon as we can. Um, it's, it is, I, I, I can't remember, Lee, do you remember how many sessions we have? I know that we have over a thousand attendees and that was I want to see really a, exciting. 150? I want to say there's about 150 over the, the five days, but that's including the tea times and the early and late shows and everything. So we've got, there's a lot of information to take in on a lot of subjects and you can be as active as, as you'd like. Great. And, and um, yeah, thank you, Sophia, for clarifying. She was talking about the recording. So I suspect the ones that are going up on YouTube will be available indefinitely. Yeah. Great. Yes, and I echo Lori Beth's uh, comments. Uh, thank you for all the hard work you've done. It's really exciting. And looks like Lori Beth just registered two of her newly hired student OER specialists. So That's very so cool. Yes, and please let me say that the effort um, is it's a it is a community effort. There are, are there are literally hundreds of people working on this. Yes, and you've held community meetings throughout this process um, over the last year, which have been open to to everyone. And I've had the pleasure of attending those. So those have been great for not only keeping people abreast of what's happening, but also asking for input on how the conference is run. And um, do you want to speak a little bit about, you know, future kind of future plans? I know those are still in process, but um, we had a little bit of a conversation before we started the webinar about how things may evolve um, over time. Sure. So um, we are also going to be speaking about that at the conference during um, the welcome. Um, you know, we we're not times are uncertain. We'd love to be able to have a conference venue. And I think most people are, are, are really, um, really hopeful that, that we could have a, sort of a hybrid conference where we might continue to have virtual platforms available as well as um, a, a physical venue. So um, we do have um, a, a committee, a, a working committee that's a branch of the steering committee called Future of Open. And, and they're working both on um, what's gonna happen next year and creating that structure so that the conference will continue to grow and will be continued to be a community um, event and, and 
driven by the community and led by the community. And, um, you know, we, we're not sure what that structure is going to look like, um, but, but that will be our next um, task. And, and I'll just add, and you might be able to add a little bit more of what this will be, but I believe it's the Friday plenary uh, session will be where we're asking for more community feedback, um, not only on how the conference went, uh, but a lot more questions as to the future um, of the conference as a whole. So um, I definitely highly encourage for everybody to take part in that. Wonderful. And so that one is Friday at uh, what time? It's the Friday plenary session. I want to say it's in the afternoon or Eastern L late morning, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's, there's only one plenary on Friday and that's going to be, that's going to be it. Oh. I, I know the closing is at 1 PM Eastern. So, so it's probably be late, late morning. I would say is probably when it is then. Okay. Cause I know they're for closing those, early for those who are this further time. West. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's quite reasonable. <laughs> it's not, a, yeah, that's wonderful. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing this. This has been really helpful. Um, and um, we're excited to uh, join you all next week. Really looking we forward to it. There it is, the future of open ed at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Oh, okay. Lovely, that will work well. All right. On, on Friday the 13th. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> this has been an interesting year. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and I don't know if Amy and, um, if Amy and Lee are going to be around for a little bit, um, but um, we can, you can continue to enter questions if you have them in the um, in the chat window. And um, while we move on to our next speakers, um, which is um, Susan and Alan from Open Education Global 2020 and connecting the global open education community. And um, let's see, what can I say about this one? Um, th this is um we this is a worldwide a conference. <laughs> okay. I will yes. turn it over to the experts here. Uh yeah, the difference being that this one is global. Um, and uh, just like you guys, we're going virtual this year, which was uh quite a task. You know, we're used to being face to face as well. Uh, not only with our hosts, but with, with all of you that attend. So it's very different. Um, but we're really excited and, you know, it's, it hasn't been all bad going virtual. Actually, some really phenomenal things have come out of this. So we're really excited to be virtual. Uh, we do have a host, uh, which was announced about a year and a half ago, which is Taipei Medical University. And they are still our host, even though we won't be there in person. But this year we have added two co-hosts, uh, eCampus Ontario and TU Delft which was our previous host year before last. This was done because of the next key point was that we, we will be featured in three different time zones. Uh, we will start in Taipei and we will work, work our way westward. Um, Delft will pick it up and then eCampus Ontario will wrap up the day. Um, during this time, uh, during the uh, OE Global 20, we will have nine keynotes, uh, really from all over the world, from all different kinds of projects. We have almost 200 sessions that people can attend during the three days of sessions, uh, 41 countries. And right now we have almost 700 res uh, re registrations which we anticipate it going up because we know of people that are still in the process. So uh, not only have we gone vir virtual, we've gone big. So uh, we're, we're really, really excited about kicking this off on November 17th. And at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Alan. He is gonna be the one to give you uh, a little bit of a tour of our conference. Thank you, Susan, and, and also thank you, uh, Amy and Lee, for uh, for telling us about Open Ed and, and carrying it on. I uh, Open Ed conference was really formative in my early years, and it's uh -huh. great that it's moved to a community format. And um, we're trying to do some. We're, we have the similar aims, like you know, how do you know great conference format that people know in person, 
Um, how do you make that happen online? But also, um, I know that Susan has said that within the registrations, we have a lot of people who've never been to an OE Global Conference, um, including me. This is my first one. Um, and, and then also, and thinking forward of like, how will this change the conference uh, experience? And so um, we've kind of taken this approach that's somewhat experimental. And um, you'll see when I get to show you um, is that um, a lot of what we're doing is trying to make this as conversational as possible, which of course all conferences are. So um, we do have the sessions and um, we're at the program and I'll show you the site, but um, we're using um, a community platform that I'll show you in a second called uh, Discourse, which is um, it, it's a place to build communities. It's kind of like a discussion board on steroids. Um, we will have live sessions in Zoom. Um, we'll have a lot of things that are asynchronous as well. Um, but what we're really hoping is that it provides a lot of means for people um, to connect. So um, the scheduling approach we have taken is to have a lot of formal programming on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And those, again, as Susan described, are gonna extend across many time zones. So that means um, there should be something for um, someone, no matter where they are in the globe, um, and they can even stay up late or get up early if they wanna you know, catch things um, over in Taiwan. Um, but also we've kind of had less structure on Tuesday, Thursday to leave room for some asynchronous activity, some workshops, some sponsor presentations. And also um, we set up a means where people can organize their own activities to connect, discuss with each other. Um, so right now I'm gonna tr try the screen sharing, but I also wanna like, as I was listening to the conversations is like, um, like all conferences now are online. So, I mean, Creative Commons was a couple of weeks ago. We got Open Ed, we got our conference. Um, there's a bazillion conferences going on. Um, plus we're spending so much of our work time in this environment. So um, thinking about the engagement is, is a real interesting challenge because, you know, a lot of people are burned out by this experience. Um, so a lot of the flexibility of these conferences where people can choose how they participate um, is important, but I think it's also um, some time to give us some pause to think about how we do conferences. So um, I'm in my screen sharing mode right now. Um, this is a site that we built over the summer to sort of be a community site for um, OE Global. Um, we've kind of taken it over for the next couple of weeks to be the conference site. Uh, and so um, there are things in there that are outside the conference that you may run across um, but one of the, the principal things we've done is we, we took off our navigation. So we have conference stuff to help people get around. But the main conference area, now stand back, there's going to be a lot of things here. Um, we have a lot of these different areas that we set up to organize. Um, yellow are generally conference information things. Um, blue are kind of participatory and green are sessions. And I'll uh, give you a sampling of this. Um, but to give some sense about the way this works is once you get into one of these areas, um, each one of these is a topic and it's a discussion thread. So every presentation, every keynote, um, every announcement is potentially a discussion and you can see the people who have been active. So um, if it's, um, I should also point out here, um, since I'm logged in on my top right, I got my dog icon, that's my personality. Um, but that little, that's a little indicator of some activity that's directed at me. It's either someone replying to something I said or something uh, that messaged me. And there's another indicator if someone sends me a private message. So there's many levels to communicate. Um, but if I went into one of these, um, we start, um, uh, we'd enter with this great video um, from our host from Taipei Medical University. And then people, um, they have entered replies. And so there's a conversation built around everything that's happening uh, in the conference. And that's the structure that we're trying um, to make. And it's just starting to pick up as people have been coming into the site. Um, we've been open about a week. So um, we could say the conference is, is already um, happening. Um, but if we go back, <laughs> as I'm clicking around way too much, um, to the main conference, what we call the lobby, um, obviously people are interested um, in the session. So we've got announcements, our help desk, et cetera. Um, we have the sessions organized by the modality. So we have our keynotes, we've got our synchronous presentations, anytime our asynchronous workshops and posters, another form of asynchronous. 
But if we were to go into, um, say, the live presentations, um, this is kind of like a busy place because it has all the ones listed and they're ordered by their most activity. It's not necessarily the way you want to find a presentation, but for every presentation, we've taken um, we've taken the information that came from their um, application, their submission, and this is the, the conference information. Um, at the very top, since I'm logged in, this is pretty critical. Um, you don't have to do any time zone calculation. We convert all the session times to your local format. So for me, um, in central Canada, uh, this first session here is uh, Monday. I know it's at 12.20 p.m. and I can sort of plan my schedule around that. Um, and I can even sort of save sessions to my own personal schedule like we saw um, in the SCHED tool that Open Ed has. Um, but then when I scroll down through here, um, our presenters, we've asked them to sort of uh, post any additional material about their presentation. So you'll find slides, videos, links. They might put out questions that they're hoping people engage with. And so um, um, Christine here has already posted a video. Um, and then as people sort of come across her conference presentation, we hope they come back here. They might ask her some questions or say, you know, how do I apply this? Uh, where do I learn more information? So again, every sort of thing that's happening um, at the OE Global Conference is a, um, it's a conversation in itself. Um, that's not really the best way to organize your conference experience. So the program takes you to a more traditional chronological format. So I can filter by the particular days. We have some topics. Um, or I can just scroll down. So this is on, on now for me, it starts Sunday night um, at 7 p.m. This is 9 a.m. in Taiwan. I don't have to do that in my head. Um, I don't know about you, but like world time zone um, calculations can drive me kind of crazy sometimes. Um, but we also have this ability, and this is only if you're logged in as a conference participant, is, um, oh, Martin Dugamas, the Moodle guy, I want to save that to my personal schedule. And so as you're going about and seeing different sessions, you can save them to your schedule. And I've already so far, I've got seven things that I've sort of bookmarked to sort of make sure that I wanna go attend. So we've tried to make this schedule flexible in terms of being in your own time zone format, um, as well as um, some of the features that, uh, we actually lifted a lot of things that we like um, from SCED because I think we've used that in uh, previous uh, iterations. Um, we're sending people who are new. We kind of have this open, this is a meet and greet area. So we ask people to do introductions here. Um, you can already see the sort of level activity. Um, anytime that you see um, someone's little icon here, um, I can click and I can sort of uh, see, I'll learn about Irune. I can send a personal message. So there's lots of ways that you can connect with other people um, at this conference. Um, you can follow a link and see a directory of everybody who's attending. Now, one thing that was kind of interesting uh, that we made going into this as we we're setting it up, um, actually all the conference information and the, uh, uh, the discussions you see, they're gonna be open. So anybody can see that. Um, the registration gets you access to the um, links that get you into the Zoom rooms for the live session. And it gives you the ability to participate in any of the discussions. But other than that, there was like no reason why to put a kind of a curtain over the whole conference uh, because of this way we set it up. So um, this material will stay here, um, well, for as long as I'm working uh, for a long time. Um, and then we've kind of, we're thinking about these kind of um, activities that would happen um, on the days between sessions. Um, we went through a lot of names. We came up with conversation and collaboration. Um, so we planned a couple things that we kind of designed. We had, we're asking people to share their favorite recipes. Um, we have this fun one called the OER Mix-Off. We're gonna like uh, announce like five um, OER pieces like media and we're gonna have a competition, have people see what they can remix from them and we'll have a little bit of playful. But it's also a place where anybody at the conference can create their own sessions if they want to meet up. So. Um, um, we have one here that's a project from the UK um, where she's like promoting interest in creating a picture book about open education and she's got a link to her project and you can interact with Chrissy and, and give her suggestions on it. 
Um, we've got um, uh, some uh, French speaking uh, conference participants. We also have another area where someone said, hey, I'm looking for other people who speak Spanish to talk about um, what we're doing. So this is a place where like, I'm looking for people who have an interest in, you know, using H5P and nursing open textbooks. Like, um, and it's a way to reach out and find people to connect with or to say like, um, you know, I'm just like trying to find my way through open education or um, I have this project that I'd like to get some feedback on. I'm just trying to meet up other educators. So this is almost unconference like um, in its format. And so we hope people take a lot advantage of this, you know, at any time during the conference. And um, for all purposes, this may live on uh, after the event. Um, so um, we're intrigued by this different kind of format. Um, it may get really complicated <laughs> and chaotic, but um, we have a really great mix of uh, presenters from all over the world, um, a lot of various topics. Um, and so we hope um, that we can um, see we have a lot of uh, community college people participating um, mentioned in the chat um, that registration is closed but we actually have probably una will announce we have a back door for folks um, and so we have an ability to take some registrations for a little while is that right susan um we have a back door to people attending this yeah. webinar. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Una will be extending uh, a special invitation to just you guys that have registered for this webinar. Uh, if you still want to uh, register for OE Global and attend, we will make it possible with a special link just for you guys because uh, registration is officially closed as of last week. Um, we did, we went ahead and officially closed it just to allow us time to make sure everyone gets in, build everybody's accounts and just make sure everybody was in there before the conference actually started. So, uh, okay, Frank, well, sorry you missed the cutoff, but you have one more opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, there is one little caveat is you do have to register with a credit card, uh, no more invoicing, or special waivers, just uh, input your credit card. And but anyway, Una will share the details after this webinar. Actually, it sounds like a, sounds like a late night commercial. Like I know wait. it does, doesn't it? <laughs> you get but the it, glasses I mean, it really too. Is. It really um, is just for you guys. Not. <laughs> <laughs> and the steak knives. Yeah, uh, buy uh, one get one free. Here. Um, yeah, and actually, it's Liz who will share all of that with you. Okay. Liz does much of this magic, which makes everything look so um, seamless here. So thank you, yeah, Liz. And if you guys have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to either Alan or I uh, regarding your registration or access or attending OE Global will help you join us. And to answer uh, Susan's question, um, yeah, we actually did kind of turn off the open registration to use our community during the conference. That, that'll be back um, afterwards. Um, but if you if you want uh, to jump in to connect um, to um, see everything that's non-conference, um, I can get you an account link um, or anybody who's interested. Uh, this is Liz, Susan, and Alan. Do you want to put your email or some other way for people to contact you? No, they just have to find me. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll put my email of in, the, in the chat. Great. Yes. <laughs> All right. Sorry, well, I'm, I'm overly sarc sarcastic. <laughs> Since Liz and I are also part of this group, we we happen to know that um, there's some cooking shows coming up, right? I mean, as Alan and Susan were mentioning, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in certain time zones is going to be very much of a typical conference presentations, but Tuesdays and Thursdays are workshops and uh, social events, uh, mm -hmm. if you choose. Um, and I understand that we might have some some of the cooks in the community might be contributing. Uh, we've oh, we got so. cooks, we've got, I mean, we do have just standby for Tuesday and Thursday. I think that's going to be, end up being a real unique opportunity. Um, another really interesting opportunity, I know we all have sponsors and we all have people, you know, that come to these conferences and display their wares. Um, this year for us, our sponsors, ha again, have a very unique area just for themselves but we have really seen some excited sponsors that are really interested in communicating with you guys and showing you what they've got. So 
don't hesitate jumping into the sponsor area as well. Um, I think you'll enjoy the sponsors we have this year. We also will have, um, we're working with um, Brian Mathers from the UK. We're creating some kind of fun uh, graphic remix activities um, where you can quickly create some media that represent your experience at the conference. Uh, I'm looking, I'm going to set up some, some times during those Tuesday, Thursdays where we'll have like an open mic and we're going to record like a podcast that will sort of be, you know, live on the conference floor. Um, so anybody who wants to sort of join into that session, um, we can do that. But really, we're kind of excited that people might think of their own activities. So we didn't want to necessarily like fill everything. We, we brainstorm a list of about 100 things and they say, wait, that's too much. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ellen and Susan for sharing that. And um, yeah, CCCOER will have a kind of a social activity on Tuesday of that week. Um, and we'll invite all community colleges to join us and say hi. And you know, um, our uh, very talented, one of our very talented co-presidents, Lisa Young, who some of you may know from Maricopa, is going to do an air meet on that day for CCCOER and friends. So if you're interested in air meet, which is another virtual platform, <laughs> join us Tuesday. Um, so lots of, lots of fun stuff. And I know, um, you know, I was trying to get somebody to commit to the, to cooking Chinese food. I thought we had our Taiwan hosts uh, who might be making, maybe they'll roll wontons for us. I, and actually, I'm not absolutely sure that that's a, that that's something in Taiwan, but um, it, it, it's going to be fun. And we invite you to uh, contribute um, and do something fun on those social days as well. Uh, right. Well, that brings us just about to the end of our webinar. Um, uh, and we have a few slides here for if you're going to share these slides with you. Um, we do have one remaining webinar this fall, which will be December 9th on tracking your key program indicators for OER programs. It'll be a very uh, informative webinar, not as fun as this one, I don't think. Um, and that's being led by Nathan Smith from Houston Community College, same institution as Amy's. Um, and we will have three uh, very um, experienced and talented speakers. Uh, we'll have Mike Mills from Montgomery Community College, who's the VP of e-learning and teaching excellence there. We will have um, Richard Sebastian from Achieving the Dream. And we will have Michael Daly from the SUNY system. Uh, so talking about how they sustain open ed um, on their campuses. So please join us for that if you, if you can. And um, if you're not on our email list, we, we always share that link here. Um, and we're, um, we also have some wonderful blog posts and student um, impact stories. And um, very shortly, we're going to have another podcast, right? Uh, Alan, I don't know if you wanted to mention that wonderful podcast that you just completed. Um, with a student from Montgomery College and her professor. Are we posted yet on that one? Yes, we are. I'm just going to grab the link and couldn't do that and unmute my mic at the same time. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll get that. Yeah, we had a, we had a great interview um, with a student from Montgomery College and her anthropology professor, and it was just fabulous conversation yeah. with her. About digital storytelling and... Um, and also independent study on um, looking at indigenous artists. Um, so it's a case of uh, community college students doing their own independent research. Um, and it's it's around digital storytelling and Alan's an expert in this, not me, but it's it's well worth a listen if you have, uh, if you have 30 minutes. All right, well, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Amy and Lee. And I hope you come back another time to uh, share with us. Uh, about uh, something in the open ed space. And thank you so much, Alan and Susan and, and Liz for running everything behind the scenes. And we're looking forward to seeing you all soon. <laughs>